Yeah, for the rest of the week. You really need a girl Oh, I hate you. <laughs> well, 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 well. What do we have here, huh? Good morning, lovebirds. My name is Pete, and all this that you see right here belongs to me, as well as that corner. So, you just gonna lay there around in bed lallygagging all day, or are you gonna get up? It's time for orientation. Have your attention? I know it's hard to believe, but I've been on this corner for 10 years. Oh, this over here is Kitty. She's a lesbo. Pete, hey, come on what? now. Did you just call me a lesbo? I really wish you wouldn't do that, Pete. I got enough dissension from my former family. Come on, Kit Kat, whatever. Look, she was uh, thrown out of her house when she came out to her parents at 15. Hey, Pete. If you can't say anything positive, then don't say anything. Mags, come on. I mean, what did she expect, huh? I mean, she made a choice. It's not a choice. And she's a child. She's more grown up than you. <laughs> yeah, and she's our daughter. And she's our daughter by choice. Some of us are very lucky to find people that love us unconditionally. And without judgment. Hello, I'm Paul. I see you've had a bit of introduction to my wife, Maggie, and our adopted daughter, Kitty. We live in an RV around the corner. But we do love coming down here and hanging out with this family and our bonus daughter. <laughs> How'd you end up here? Well, we didn't really end up here. Uh, we are on a bit of an adventure. We. Uh, yeah, we, we have a big house in Central Texas, Colleen, in the suburbs. We raised our family there. They grew up. They're on their own. Three kids. Three kids. And I don't know, the house was just so empty. We became empty nesters. <laughs> well, I, it, 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 it was a large house and we did the family thing. And uh, I was ready to explore. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One morning, he drives up in this big RV. Shocked was an understatement. Well, we didn't need the space that we had in the home that we had. Yeah. And it was a big house, too much for us. And we felt like it would be perfect for another family. Well, I found a nice little couple that reminded us of ourselves when we were well, we spend holidays with them every year. And they let me come along, too. I even get to babysit for them sometimes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They let you babysit? They better be careful. Careful of what? Of turning them, of course. Turning them? Turning them, Pete, into what? She's going to turn them into decent human beings. OK, ladies, ladies, let's just move on. Why don't you come down, have some dinner with us? We'd love to have you. That would be so nice. Uh, anytime. We look forward to it. Right. Come on, Miss Kitty. Wow. You know, I really wish I could do more to help that girl. I mean, she's a good kid. Just confused, I think. She came to us a few years ago, scared, lonely, no money, like we all do. And I took care of her until Paul and Mags took her in. And I was happy for that. But I tell you, it's a damn shame the way her parents threw her out at such a young age. I mean, if I were ever to meet her parents, I'd give them both a piece of my fucking mind. And you can take that to the bank. But uh, enough about that. Let's continue with the introduction, shall we? This one right here is David. Now you stay away from him. He's a meth head. Oh, I'm, I'm not a meth head. I just like my relaxed version of all. 
<laughs> relax, but he's talking about getting high. And you think that meth is the only way to do that? No, not at all. But I'm sure that you know every way that there is to do that. Please don't listen to Pete. He has no idea what brought me here. No idea. And I don't even think he really cares. Why we Yeah, and we'll listen if you want to share. Thanks. Um, for starters, drugs wasn't something I ever planned to do. I mean, for many years, I was just a normal, just normal guy at home. I had a car. I had a job. <laughs> I had a really pretty wife. I kind of like your lady there. And I, I worked in sales. I was doing pretty well, but some of the members of my sales team, they liked to party. A little way too much, especially if they met their quota. It was a celebration, as they said. And they celebrated how? <laughs> In every way possible. Drinks, women, drugs. You know, I, I watched a senior VP passing it out to everyone like candy. I mean, I wanted to leave, but I got so much push from my team members, I, I just, I felt compelled to stay. God. As time went on, so did the parties. Soon, I mean, they started happening whether we did well or not. It didn't matter. And I mean, I, I tried to quit. I realized I, I couldn't. And everything just went downhill from there. Suddenly, I wasn't doing so well. Not my job. Finances, and especially not my wife. Well, I mean, did she try to get you to quit or help? Yeah. Yeah, of course she did. I loved Emily. She was such a good woman. Such a good woman. But, but when you're on drugs, you only hear that voice in your head. I mean, no one else matters. <laughs>